Hi everyone and welcome to today's um, session which is on constipation, um, which I know is um, a really important symptom and it's one that tends to get ignored. So there was a, a report done in the UK in 2019 that showed that one in seven adults experience constipation, about one in three children will experience constipation and it's really common and between 2017 and 2018 in the UK 196 people were actually admitted to hospital with constipation. Um, in another study they looked at um, just under it was about 2,300 2, um, people with constipation and over half of those people had said that they hadn't gone to the GP, they'd never got any um, treatment or support for it because they didn't consider it a big deal. Now, if it's not a big deal, then you wouldn't have had almost 200 people over a period of a year actually admitted to hospital because of constipation. So, you know, why do we think it's a minor digestive problem and not a big deal? It actually is. It actually is a big deal and it can lead to other health conditions um, that are a real problem. So it's really important that we do take it seriously. It, you know, it's linked to um, things like di diverticulitis and, and other, other conditions where the inflammation and the damage done to the gut, gut lining can actually be permanent. So you, you need to take constipation seriously. Um, it usually occurs when food waste, it, that's left over, it travels down through the intestines, so you eat your food, it's, it's digested in your stomach, it's absorbed in the small intestines, and then it moves to the large intestines. And that's usually where it's fermented by um, your gut bacteria that live in, in your large intestine. And then when we poo, we remove it. Now, if it doesn't travel on through and out, um, it kind of stays around and the longer it stays, the more water gets reabsorbed back into the body so that the waste becomes drier and becomes harder and then it becomes more difficult to pass out. That's when you end up with constipation. So think about if you have a salad lettuce, um, after a couple of days when you bought it from the shop, it starts to kind of go a bit limp, it doesn't go hard and dry, but it kind of goes a bit limp. And then if you then put your salad leaves into some water, then the salad leaf kind of gets a bit of, of life back again and it starts to be a bit more crispy and, and you can see it kind of gets a bit of vitality. That kind of happens because what happens is the water flows into the lettuce because there's more salt and sugar in, in, the, in the cells of the lettuce than in the water. And that kind of plumps up the lettuce. So what happens, it, that same process kind of happens to our waste in, it, in our colon that we need to kind of, when water leaves the poo and goes into the rest of the body, what it's leaving is this kind of high dry con con compacted waste. And the way that some laxatives work is that they actually pick up water as they go through on the way down to the colon so that it's a bit like the water and the lettuce. The poo kind of gets, um, gets water in it. So it's, it's less dry and it's less hard and therefore it's e easier to pass, um, pass out. So there's different ways of looking at constipation. Usually constipation is chronic straining, um, really hard to, to pass a bowel motion. It might also be feeling like you haven't quite fully evacuated, like there's something still inside. Um, you can have kind of really lumpy um, stools or little ball-like stools, a bit like um, chocolate ball teasers. Um, there's something called the Bristol stool chart, which um, I'll, I'll see if I can find a way. I'll put a link in somewhere so you can actually go and have a look. And the Bristol stool chart is basically pictures of your poo um, and, you know, what is considered to be diarrhea, what's considered to be constipation. So usually what's a number one or a number two on the Bristol stool chart is considered constipation. So that's your hard, your hard and lumpy and your Maltesers. Four is kind of your, your mythical fairy poo or unicorn poo. That's kind of the poo that we all aspire to. And then as you go down, kind of five and six tends to be much more um, your loose bowel motions and your diarrhea. So number four is what we're looking for. That's our, our fairy or our unicorn poo. Anything between one to two, kind of three maybe, um, would be considered constipation. So some people are more likely to be constipated than others. It's much more common in women, yay, for us, and especially during pregnancy or after giving birth. Um, uh, some of that is, is kind of 
because you're holding on and you don't want to poo because you think it's going to hurt. Um, older adults um, tend to be more constipated as well. If you have any kind of trauma or damage to our pelvic region, um, that can cause constipation. Um, people who eat very little fibre, people who eat a highly meat a processed food type diet and very little vegetables are highly likely to get constipated. People who are dehydrated, um, people on certain medica uh, medications um, or dietary supplements. So there's a whole bunch of, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute actually, but there are medications specifically that can cause constipation and people with certain health um, disorders or conditions like inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes, hypothyroid, SIBO and irritable bowel syndrome are um, much more likely to experience constipation too. Children can um, uh, be constipated. Sometimes it's because of diet, sometimes it's because of stress, sometimes it's because they're dehydrated. Um, so there, there's lots of reasons why we might be constipated and sometimes taking a laxative isn't always the answer and it might even make things worse. If you're constantly taking laxatives, you can actually do a huge amount of damage to your um, intestines to the point where they then can't function at all. So what I want to do is focus on the causes in regards to um, the, your tips. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about causes particularly, and then in my tips, I'll kind of address those causes a bit more. So the first thing I wanna make clear is that we might, all experience constipation temporarily at some time. So really it's, it's the chronic constipation that I'm really addressing, but to know that we all at some point will, will suffer um, constipation. Um, there is something called foot, fear of other toilets, which is a uh, number one reason why if we're traveling or if we're out and about, we may actually be constipated. So traveling, illness, stress also will, will cause it. So it's really common when you travel to a new place, the gut likes everything to be the same. It likes routine. And the nerves of our gut remember the kind of food we eat, um, what time we eat, so what time we usually go to the toilet, um, what time of day or night it is. And when we travel, that, that kind of rhythm is disrupted and our gut doesn't like it. And so when, when we travel, we're much more likely to be dehydrated because we'll, we'll you know, change perhaps what we drink. Maybe we don't drink so much. Maybe we drink more alcohol. We might change the food that we eat. Uh, we'll change when we get up and when we go to bed. Um, and our gut gets confused, not very happy, and it basically puts the brake on everything until it recognises what it considers to be normal. And once it kind of thinks, yeah, this is, this is normal, then it resumes. So you might be constipated for a couple of days while your gut is coming to terms with the fact that you're not, you're not kind of um, continuing with your normal routine. And those of you that, that and I will actually say those of us um, that experience fear of other toilets, foot, you have to get over it because um, in the long run, you've got to go. Um, and so, you know, it might be that you don't want to go when you're at work. So you hold, hold, hold and hold and hold and hold. Um, and sometimes you don't go at all. So if you don't have your morning poo, if you, for whatever reason, because you rushed out the door and you're busy, you hold it all day because you don't want to go in the office toilet. And then by the time you come home, the moment's pass. So you're going to have to get over that as well. If you go away for the weekend, new toilets, or you're with other people, you might not want to go near them. So that can actually cause problems and cause temporary um, constipation. Absolutely dehydration. Not drinking enough water will impact your stools and will make them drier. Um, a diet, as I said, highly refined, highly processed foods, meat-based type diet with little vegetables and fruit, you are much more likely to get constipation. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth will cause constipation. If you have specific bacteria that create a gas, that gas causes constipation. Um, carbohydrate intolerance, um, protein intolerance as well, actually. So lots of food intolerances can cause constipation. There was a study done on children um, that I read that said that, that in children, if they ate, uh, if they had a problem with the protein in milk, casein, they were more likely to be constipated. Whereas if they had an intolerance to lactose, the sugar, they were much more likely to have diarrhea. That was just one study. It doesn't necessarily mean that's true for all, but Food intolerances can create constipation in some people. For some other people, it might be diarrhea. 
Hormones play a role, I'll talk about that in a minute. Dysbiosis, um, which is when there's again a bacterial imbalance in the, in the large intestine. Some bacteria can actually produce gas that create constipation. Um, any kind of structural damage to your um, pelvic region or your actual gut itself can create constipation. Um, inflammatory bowel disease, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute because that can create kind of blockages. Um, and stress um, can also cause constipation. And emotional reasons, you know, I've seen it, I've seen it in clinic where people are holding on to something, are holding on to a past experience or situation, something emotional, and they hold on and they don't, they can't let go. And the minute they talk about it and get some support from a counsellor or from a therapist and they let go of whatever that emotional block was, everything else moves too. So it's really important to try and find the cause because um, it's not always diet. So having said that, let's talk about some tips if you are constipated. So number one thing is have a look at your diet. Um, do you need to increase the amount of fiber that you eat? We need about 30 grams of fiber roughly a day. So, you know, it might be you need to up your veggies. So, you know, ideally we'd be having about seven to nine serves of veggies a day. But are you eating enough whole grains? Are you eating enough beans and lentils and legumes? One to two pieces of fruit a day. So that, that's kind of really important. It could also be that you're eating way too much fiber and you, you're not drinking enough water to go along with it. So you might need to pull back. If you can't really go from a very processed meat oriented diet straight to nine serves of veggies a day, if you do that, you, you definitely experience constipation. You need to do it really gradually. Um, a little bit at a time so just kind of increase your veggies by one one serve of a, a day or increase your whole grains by just one serve a day um dehydration if you drink lots of alcohol you're much more likely to become dehydrated that can cause constipation processed grains you know white foods white flour white rice um red meat junk foods which are high in salt and very low in fiber those kind of foods will cause constipation so maybe you need to just kind of tweak your diet a little bit to see if that makes a difference um look at whether you need to increase your water intake you should be having around um one and a half to two liters a day you might need more if you're actual flying um Ask your GP or if you see a naturopath or nutritionist to find out whether it's the medicines or the supplements that you're taking. Um, so ibuprofen um, can sometimes cause um, constipation, opioid medication, painkillers like codeine, tramadol, morphine, iron supplementation, antidepressants, um, amitriptyline is an example. Some blood pressure medication can cause constipation and some antihistamines can. So if you are taking any kind of medications then or supplements, have a, have a chat with your GP or your naturopath and nutritionist and find out, is it possible that this is what's causing my constipation? Particularly if you, if you didn't have constipation before, you started taking this medication and then the constipation's suddenly got worse or it's appeared. If you think that it's possible that you have any um, issues with your pelvic floor function, if you've had a baby or if you've had an accident, car accident or if you're finding that you've got an, a really um, active bladder, it might be that you've got a bit of incontinence, um, fart when you walk and you can't control that, all of those you know, things can be a possible sign that your pelvic floor isn't as strong or perhaps it's not as relaxed as it needs to be. So go and see a woman's health physio and get assessed because they can absolutely 100% help with, with um, improving your pelvic floor function. It might be that you need to go see an osteopath or a chiropractor if you think that there's something wrong with your alignment because you've been in an accident or something's happened where perhaps there's a structural reason for your constipation. Um, get checked for those underlying causes. It's really, really important. So it can be because of, of a bacterial overgrowth. That's, that's always possible. And I'll talk about SIBO in a minute. Um, there can be physical blockages and hormones can absolutely play a role. So estrogen and progesterone both affect motility in the gut. It's really common to be constipated before you actually have a period. Um, some of the studies are really contra contradictory. Some suggest that high, pro high progesterone 
um, have been associated with constipation because progesterone inhibits motility. They've had a study in mice where high estrogen did the same. However, studies have shown that low estrogen and low progesterone also will affect motility and decrease it. We know that estrogen keeps cortisol in check. Um, so when estrogen declines, cortisol increases, and that can cause um, constipation because everything kind of slows down because resting and digesting is not a priority when you're very stressed and you've got high amounts of cortisol. So we know that reproductive hormones do play a role, but there's a lot we don't know specifically as to why. And as I said, there's quite a bit of contradiction around that. Low thyroid hormone can cause constipation because everything slows down. So our thyroid hormone is like the flame under a Bunsen burner. And if that's dialed right down, everything slows down. And that's why we have slow transit time and we can become constipated. It's a really common symptom. So that needs to be addressed and, and, and assessed by a doctor. Um, diabetes is also associated with constipation. You can have physical blockages. So sometimes if your, your waist, your poo that's inside um, becomes really hard and dry, it can become compacted. It can't pass through and then everything backs up like a traffic jam. Um, also, if you have a lot of inflammation or damage to the gut, you can have um, parts of the gut can stick to each other. Um, really common in inflammatory bowel disease. So um, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, diverticulitis, you can end up with, with partial blockages from the inflammation or from bits of, of your gut kind of sticking together and creating partial blockages. So that's something also that, that would need to be um, assessed. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, um, the wrong type of bacteria, basically the wrong amounts living in the small intestine when they shouldn't be, uh, create methane gas that can cause constipation. So this needs testing. If you're tested and it's found out that you have SIBO, then you can absolutely get, get that treated and get rid of it. Um, really important to test because it depends on whether you've got methane, hydrogen or whatever. So get tested because you don't want to be going on a, a SIBO treatment plan if you don't have SIBO because it can make constipation worse, make things worse. And then you've got what's um, an imbalance in your large intestine. Sometimes that's called large intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, and that can also create problems because the bacteria that's there, that's perhaps the wrong amount, that's not balanced out with the other bacteria that's there will produce gas that also can cause constipation. And that's usually rectified with a really good dose of fiber or prebiotics um, and a really good variety of, of plant foods. The greater variety of, of the food that you eat, the more the colors, the more the, the different types of, of plant foods you have, the greater the diversity in your gut and the less likely you're going to have any gut problems at all. So look at your diet and are you, you know, if you're eating peas and carrots every day and that's all you eat, that probably means you've got the equivalent of peas and carrots of bacteria in your gut. So the greater the, the diversity, the greater the range, the more range you're much more likely to have in your in your gut, which is good for us. Um, red flags. So if you have blood in your stools, your poo, if you have any unexplained weight loss, you're not on a diet and you just keep losing weight and you can't work out why you're losing weight. Um, persistent tiredness alongside the constipation. Uh, all the constipation is chronic. You've had it for a long time and it just won't go away. Then go to the GP and get it assessed. Get, get it looked at. It's really important that you don't uh, try and think, oh, well, it'll just go away. You must go to the GP if you have any of those symptoms. 100% consider stress. How can you reduce your stress load? How can you um, become more resilient to the stress that, that surrounds you? you know, breathing techniques are fantastic. Mindfulness practices, yoga, some really cool yoga postures and sequences can actually help get things moving in the gut. Um, massage in order to reduce your um, stress levels, you can get abdominal massage. You can do abdominal massage on yourself. Cold showers um, can also help reduce our stress levels. So if you have a nice hot shower in the morning, maybe just do one second of a cold and then, and then up that amount as well. That's been shown to really help reduce cortisol. Um, taking mini moments of peace, mini moments of just rest, of quietness, of stillness, or finding little moments in your day where you can do something that's really joyful and fun. Think back to when you were a child. What did you do as you were, when you were a child that was fun? Maybe it was colouring in. Maybe it was playing outside and making um, 
I don't know, grass tea. It might be roller skating, whatever it is. Find the thing that you love doing as a kid and do it now as an adult. Find those moments of joy and moments of peace in your day in order to just reduce that stress because that will make a huge difference to your gut function and how, and how um, you digest your food. And as I said, reflect on your emotions. If you're holding on to something or something you can't let go of, um, personal experience, past memory, then it might be time to go and speak to someone about that because as I've said, I've seen it with clients, when you release an emotion that's blocked in your body, if you've had constipation, that goes too. So consider that too. Um, intolerances, as I said, sensitivity to certain foods can cause constipation. So gluten and wheat rich foods can sometimes cause constipation. Um, celiac disease in some people can cause constipation rather than diarrhea and um, dairy. Um, so do a diet symptom diary um, to find out if you have a possible intolerance. Um, and then you can complete an elimination challenge diet. So come and join my reduce the reactivity um, reset to test for food intolerance. It's a six to eight week program where I'll teach you how to remove the food that you think could be causing you um, symptoms and then challenge that food or that food group to see if maybe you can have a little bit. It's just, you can't have a lot. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of the, the top way of finding out if, if you've got any intolerances and managing them in a really sustainable way. Make an appointment with a naturopath or a nutritionist or me um, to see if we can come up with an individualized plan for you. Let's work out what the causes are and let's, let's see if we can sort it out for you. Get you pooping again. Um, simple remedies that you can try. Um, magnesium is fantastic. Mag magnesium oxide in particular and citrate. Um, take about two hours before bed, anywhere between 500 and 2000 milligrams, start really low, start 500, and you basically work your way up until you start to poo. Warm glass of water on waking and chew the water and that, that can actually start to get things flowing. You can add a squirt of lemon juice or a slice of lemon as well. Um, that improves bile flow. Bile actually helps us to um, absorb our fats but what bile does too is that it works as a natural laxative so if you have any sour or bitter foods it actually encourages um, all of our enzymes and our bile and our um, uh, stomach acid to kind of kick in and that gets things moving too you can use flowy um, which is a kind of kiwi based um, I think it's a like a fiber um, I don't know if it's a probiotic but it's fiber based that can be really helpful and and okay if you have SIBO or any any kind of um, other kind of gut issues flowy can be really good have two kiwi fruit a day I mean that'll also give you a vitamin c um, uh, daily intake as well psyllium husks metamucil prune stewed apples all work but you just got to make sure it's something like psyllium and metamucil that you drink lots of water alongside it otherwise you can end up with worse constipation can use probiotics um can use prebiotics partially hy hydrolyzed guar gum is really good but best to have guidance sometimes if you have lots of bloating and discomfort um and you take a fiber or a prebiotic or a probiotic type product, it can actually make things worse. If you get worse on fiber prebiotics or probiotics, there's a really good chance you have SIBO, so it can't get tested. And then there's, there's a way of, of bringing those things in later on. You can have laxatives and, and stool softeners if it's really bad, but there's something called the three-day rule. So what can happen is you can take a really strong laxative um, and the strong laxative basically completely clears everything out. So if you've ever had a colonoscopy, you'll take a laxative where there's like nothing, it's all gone. So our colon has three sections. And usually when we poo, we're really just emptying up the very last third section of our, of our colon. And then it kind of it kind of backs up. So you remove that section, the, ne the next lot of poo moves into that last part of the colon. So if we clear the whole colon out with a strong laxative, there's nothing left, then it can take three days after you've taken a laxative to have another poo. So it's not like you've had a poo and then you're looking, oh, I should be going once a day and you don't poo and then the next day comes and you don't poo. And then you go and take another laxative. You're actually gonna make things worse for yourself in the long run. 
So if you take a strong laxative, give it at least three days before you poo again, because it can take that long to build enough um, of your food waste in your colon in order for that rhythm to kind of start again. So don't take a laxative before that th those three days if you've taken a strong laxative. Moving your butt. So, you know, walking, gentle exercise, getting things moving up here can get things moving down there. You don't want to be going out necessarily and going for a 20K run, but you do not need to move your body. It can be really hard because you can feel really rough. You can feel really tired, but movement is really important to get things moving down below. Your bowel is primed to poo before 10 a.m., which is usually around like natural peak of cortisols first thing in the morning. So wake up. Um, uh, the cortisol will wake up your colon, which is usually why you have a, um, a bowel motion when you wake up in the morning. Uh, cup of coffee can give you, your um, colon a bit of an oomph if you kind of feel like you need a little bit of extra um, kind of rocket fueled energy. Um, have it one hour after breakfast rather straight on waking, especially if you have reflux. But tr you know, try and get into the routine of, of always having a poo first thing in the morning because that's the, our body's designed for that. And then look how you sit on your toilet. So a to our toilets are not really in the West. Our toilets are not great for pooing. So when you, if you've ever been traveling in a lot, lots of, you know, India or Southeast Asia or other countries, they have squat toilets. They're fantastic. That's exactly, we are meant to squat when we poo. And these silly white thrones that we have are not great for, for pooing, to be honest. So, you know, if you find you're constipating, you're uncomfortable, then you can rock gently. You can also raise your legs up. There's something called a squatty potty. Um, you can kind of make your own, but you just need to kind of raise your legs a little bit in order to open up your pelvis so that gravity can work and you're much more likely to have a poo um, without having to strain. So just think about how you're sitting on the toilet and, and it's almost like um, not a, quite a squat, but almost a squat by raising your legs up. Um, so it puts us in the correct position and allows more space for flow and, as I said, can prevent straining. So if this is really interesting to you, if you've got any questions, please, you know, message me at any time. You can email me at um, Sarah B at SarahBenchleyNaturopathy.com. Um, pop along to my website. Come and join um, my Women's Wellbeing Circle Facebook group. It's free and you can find out even more information. And if you want to work with me, go to the links page. There are lots of different ways that you can work with me and I'd love to help you. Get, get rid of that poo that's stuck in your colon. So have a fantastic day and I'll see you all soon. Take care and thank you for watching.